Hello YouTube, this is Nathan Lawrence, Good News Tree Service in Wilsonville, Oregon. And it's time for another update on my Japanese garden, the Nathan Lawrence Tsukashi Japanese Garden here in Wilsonville. And um, I have in my garden, I do a tour of it every so often. It is now spring and things are popping. Things are literally bursting at the seams. The, the, the ferns are growing, the hosses are growing, the flowers are blooming, and the, the, the yard is literally popping with life. And so I want to give you a quick tour. We're starting out here at the, um, the street, and it's a small garden. And um, uh, so we've made use of every small area and tried to landscape it so it looks nice. In fact, we're out here uh, on the street. As you can see, and I've got a fire hydrant here, and um, why not landscape around the fire hydrant to kind of hide the, the the ugly yellow fire hydrant? I've got well, the daffodils are done blooming, but I've got a lot of daffodils uh, around the fire hydrant to uh, and and other flowers that bloom a yellow color, daisies and things like that. So anyway, uh, recently I purchased this this uh, this uh, uh, pine tree. This is like a uh, white bark pine and anyway it's something from the mountains and it's kind of a Japanese style and uh, we pruned it that way and uh, so here's a here's my fire hydrant try not to get the neighbors vehicles in there but I have actually a dry kind of a Japanese style stream bed coming out so when they flush out the fire hydrant every so often it will um, it will create a little stream here a stream effect and I've this is my flower garden I've got flowers to kind of brighten up the neighborhood. So there's a lot of sun here. So I've got flowers um, uh, blooming all year long and um, to kind of just uh, give it a, a beautiful look. Now here's my Alaska cedar. It's got a real, real Japanese uh, contorted look and I've got a little Japanese maple here. And it's overgrown. Um, uh, it, it, it's a uh, time of year when things are growing uh, really fast and so I'll be pruning that a little bit later so you can't even see the foliage. I've got some vine maples there. We're looking to the sun, sorry about that. And some more Japanese maples and skimmia. And I've got iris beginning to bloom and the, and the ferns are starting to uh, pop out and, and grow. And here's, some, um, here's my uh, uh, Quirica, Quirica um, uh, plants that uh, are different colors and and then some uh, hyacinths that are blooming. Now I've got my ginkgo tree here, which I have pruned in a, in a Japanese style, and uh, and then I've got cobblestones that used to pave uh, the streets of downtown Portland, and I brought them in here, and I even got some horse rings down here. So this is my own. Uh, you know, detritus that I pick up here and there. It's a very Japanese thing to do to pick up different things and add them into your yard. But these are actually horse rings. They're probably 120 years old or more. They came from downtown Portland. I, I found them laying around, so I picked them up. And these, this is sandstone uh, curbing that came from downtown Portland, uh, some old buildings. So, welcome to my garden. This is my own personal private garden of Eden. And I've got everything pruned in a sukashi, more or less in a sukashi, a Japanese style of pruning. And I've got a, a gate, Torii gate, that you are able to go through, step into this, this, uh, this Garden of Eden. And this is my personal Garden of Eden. It's my little oasis uh, in the middle of a crazy world. And I've built everything from scratch over the last 30 years. And uh, planted the moss, and the ferns, and all of these wonderful trees to kind of give me a little buffer from the world around me and uh, the neighbors. And even then, we uh, have just had built next to us a three-story sixplex that looks right down in our backyard. So. Anyway, I've done everything I can to kind of wall off the world. And so I have my own little piece of sanctity in the midst of a crazy world. Anyway, this is my front yard here. And I like to come out and walk around in my yard. I 
find a lot of peace and rest here. My wife and I share it. Here's my front steps. I've got, I'm working on trees. I've got uh, pots and a little Hugo pine that i am uh, got wired up, I'm bonsaiing. And I've got sedums and succulents planted in these in these pots. Here's here's a, a Japanese yew plum, and uh, my boxwoods need they need um, pruning. They're getting full, and uh, got a little impetitum rhododendrons. I got some really old rhododendrons here, and then this this uh, azalea is in full bloom, and it's gorgeous. And uh, got a blue atlas cedar there in the corner of the house that I've been pruning for years. And uh, we've got stepping stones here that we invite us to take a nice little stroll around the corner of the house. I've got the stepping stones all fitting together like pieces of puzzle. And just invite you to walk around the garden toward the, the back yard. And before we go there, I've re-landscaped the front here. I have an iris bed. Iris are about ready to pop. It's on the other side of the fence here. I've got a grapevine that is just coming alive. And um, got some variegated euonymus form a little border here. I've totally re-landscaped since I made another video, or made the last video, I've re-landscaped this, this area here with, uh, with azaleas. I've got three colors, pink, red, and white. And I um, um, want them to literally form a whole border here and let them get tall and prune them in a kind of a sheared cloud pruning style. Here's a deodara, weeping deodara cedar that I planted when it was about 12 feet tall. Now it's about 35 feet tall. It's got a nice contorted look. I'm really happy with how that's turned out. I even got a palm tree in here that uh, kind of graces the front. And got another Japanese yew plum. And, uh, and then here's the um, Here's the uh, ginkgo tree reaching to the sky and I've got it pruned. It's about 20 feet tall, 18, 20 feet tall, and I prune it out every year in, in this, this uh, kind of keeping it in a uh, bonsai, but it's not bonsai. It's a Tsukashi style again, open and thinned out. I've got another um, a little, uh, I'm not sure what it is. It looks like a little coast pine or something that I'm pruning. I've got it wired up so that it will grow out over the lawn. I've got fascias in here. They're starting to grow. Everything's growing. And uh, here's some New Zealand flax. And uh, the uh, ajuga, I think that's what that is, is blooming. Columbines are coming up. I've got a few flowers in here. Um, and I, here's a new addition to my yard, my garden, is a, a, a lantern. And um, um, it's my lanterns. I've got four lanterns. Um, I'm not into, uh, you know, the Japanese or, uh, well, they got the concept of Japanese gardening, um, that style from the Chinese. When the Buddhists came over to, to Japan, uh, they brought the Chinese style of gardening over with them about, uh, oh, about 700 A.D., and I'm not a Buddhist, and I don't, you know, their, their landscaping is very um, along Zen Buddhist lines. And I like the, the aesthetic principles. Here's a uh, Laurestinus that's blooming. I've got it sheared, and I've got Arborvitae here that are blocking off. You can see the tip of one of the apartment buildings up there. Anyway, we're walking toward the back here. We've got, we've got dogwood, and we've got some sprayers that I've used to treat the photinia against uh, leaf blight. But the um, the Buddhists, uh, I like a lot of their aesthetic principles. I don't, I'm not partial to their their religious uh, ideals, which have worked their way into a lot of the Japanese 
gardening principles. If you go back and read about geomancy and all that kind of thing. And I'm not into that. I'm just into the aesthetic aspects of it. For me, my garden is a place for me to commune with God, to pray, to read my Bible, and to, uh, as a Christian, to enjoy uh, my, again, my little garden of Eden on, on, on this planet. But here's my, another gate as we start to walk into the backyard. And uh, I made this gate. It's kind of unique. I've got a, a, a lintel on top made out of a piece of old, uh, looks like Hollywood juniper that I, I, I cut down. And uh, we're going to go through this gate. This handle is a, is a uh, handle that came off the old farmhouse that I uh, grew up in that my grandfather built. And I took that uh, handle, it's a brass handle, it's, almost, it's about 100 years old, and I put it on this gate. So now we'll shut the gate, and I've kind of uh, got a trowel here for the handle. Uh, right here, an old trowel. I think that trowel was my great-grandfather's. I managed to procure it and put it to good use. And got an old bamboo rake as a uh, as an accent on the back of this gate. And now I've got a flotinia hedge. That's what I was spraying with the sprayer. It's um, from leaf blight, but as you can see, it needs to be pruned. It's growing like crazy. Flotinia is one of the fastest growing shrubs in the yard, so I will be pruning this several times a year. Uh, I've put a rock border here as we walk along, and it's got wine bottles uh, that I put in between as an accent. Again, it's a very Japanese thing to, to do, to, to use uh, discarded objects and, and work them into your landscape. So now we're coming around into my backyard, and I have uh, some large rocks here that are pointed, so they just kind of invite you to to come right out into the yard and the way they're angled um, it, 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 not only that this is like a, this rock here is like a viewing platform where it invites you to stop and to to view the site that is here in the backyard and I've done uh, uh, again since I last made my video I made the last video uh, this winter I have added some more things and uh, rearranged some of the rocks it's, Japanese garden is something that's always a work in progress. Always messing around with it. You're always adding and subtracting and rearranging because plants grow and plants live and they need to be pruned and they die. And so it's an ongoing work of love. Uh, you can't, Japanese gardens are high maintenance. Uh, this is, here's a little Hinoki cypress that somebody gave me. So it's in a pot just sitting there and uh, We'll, uh, we'll prune that out and open that up a little bit. I haven't gotten around to that yet. We do feed the birds. We've got bird, bird feeders all over the place and the squirrels because, um, well, a healthy environment attracts some you know, pollinators and birds and squirrels. And we like, uh, we like them to be in here because they, they help keep the insects down and, and they fertilize and it just makes a nice, you know, nice environment. So here is, um, here is my, um, my largest Japanese lantern right there. Again, I started to talk about my lanterns. I have four of them uh, because I'm not into the, the, the Japanese religion, uh, Shinto or Buddhism. All of my lanterns are, uh, they're actual lanterns. Uh, they're not uh, patterned after the uh, Shinto shrine or the, or the, uh, you know, the temples. I'm not into that, but, but I have gotten uh, uh, lanterns, pagoda type lanterns, but they're actually lanterns. You can actually put candles in them and uh, and uh, use them to light up the garden at night. And here's, here's my moss garden. I, I've got moss. It's coming along nicely. Uh, I'm really happy. Here's a coral bark maple that I've I purchased and I've got, got uh, boards to kind of spread the crown out a little bit. It's starting to grow. It's coming alive. That's really kind of exciting. Um, here and the ferns are popping out. I've got a, literally a fern garden. I've got ferns, all different kinds of ferns all over the place. And here's some Carex grass. I've got some masses of that in a few places. We'll take you to the other side of the yard in a minute. Here's a weeping hemlock. I really he shouldn't be out in the sun. He'd prefer to be in the shade, but um, that's where he is for now. And then I have a dry stream bed. It comes down. Here's ferns. And you kind of. Uh, starts under this, the base of this this uh, this U and this these, this arbor body hedge and it comes down here and and it just 
empties into this here at the back of the lawn into what kind of looks like a beach scene. And I've got a, a rock here. It's kind of a dry stream bed and I've got a rock that this Japanese lantern sits on. And so it looks like it's an island. And I have actually transplanted moss and brought it in here to put moss on top of all of my lanterns and uh, to make them look kind of old and a little bit more um, like they've been around for a while. And, um, and then I have, uh, I've got several pots back here. Here's, here's another um, mugo pine, a special kind um, uh, that I'm going to begin to bonsai prune and uh, some more fatsia and some pyrus japonicas back to their blooming. That's why I wanted to make this video because I wanted to get the pyrus japonicas they're in full bloom right now. And then here's my uh, uh, coast pine that I have Japanese pruned in a Tsukashi style. Here's this Dewardia pseudo camellia uh, that I planted a couple years ago and it's growing up nicely. And then I've got some more rocks back here and I've got a little planter. I, as you can see, I've used bamboo uh, as, a, as a kind of a retaining wall. And I've got another, here's another Hinoki cypress that's doing quite well. I planted it back there. And, and then you know, I've got an outbuilding in the back here. And uh, rhododendron, more fatsia. And here's my, here is my um, a coast pine that I'm working on to prune in a Japanese style. I've got a, um, on the corner of this building, to kind of take your eye away from the corner, um, uh, I've got a, an old snag that I, 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 I dug, I found in the woods and I brought here and planted, uh, or dug in anyway. And that adds kind of a real artistic feature. And then I've, um, um, you know, improves the aesthetics of it. And then I put in this, this bamboo wall, um, this fence, to hide uh, the, the, the apartments next door. I did not want to look at those. I look at them up above my hedge, but I, at least I don't want to look at them at eye level. And uh, the hostas are starting to pop. There's a hosta there. I've got a lot of hostas. My yard used to be very shady, but then we had to take a tree down to shade it. And so I've got hostas all over. And they're starting to come back. And they do all right, as long as they're not in the sun. And here's another... Um, uh, another Pyrus japonica uh, that is starting to bloom and the, the new foliage is a bright red which I really enjoy and yeah, I've got lots of Nandina domesticas heavenly bamboo and they kind of help shield the building and also another thing that I did this is my another outbuilding that I made with old barn wood uh, it is uh, uh, anyway it's an old 120 year old barn that I I took the wood off of and sighted it. But anyway, I, I, I this, this, behind this, uh, this fence here, I've got stuff stored. And so I built this out of bamboo. This, there's a, the, uh, another Nandina or heavenly bamboo. And then I built this, this screen here, as you can see, out of old boards that I had. And then bamboo. And I've made a, uh, I've made a, a screen out of that. And uh, here's some old rocks. I've made a little rock retaining wall on the side of this outbuilding. And I've planted more Nandina and ferns and, and rhododendrons. And I got more Nandina back there uh, against my back fence. And then this retaining wall here, they're old stepping stones that I hate to throw away, so I turned them into a wall. And then actually, this is all pieces of concrete. This used to be my front, uh, front walk. Uh, that went out from the house out to the street. I ripped it out and I've reused that. Here's a little hemlock that I've planted. It's in a pot. I'm going to bonsai pruning that. So I'm going to step back here a little bit. Well, I, before we do that, uh, here is my walkway that goes back here to the back. And I've got rocks. And there's a little bench that you can sit on. And a, I've got a rock here where you can put your feet and you can actually stand on it and look out at the garden. And again, um, we've got viewing points so we can actually stop and look at the garden from different vantage points. And uh, the hostas are starting to come, the ferns. And so let's st step here. And again, I've got another, here we are at the corner of my deck again. Uh, I, I, um, I built this last summer, I built this 
screen to sh so I could sit at my um, work at my, uh, my grill without the apartments next door staring down at me. I got a little privacy, so I built this cedar fence here to screen that off. And, um, and I also recently redid my deck. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. And I've got some planters that have uh, succulent sedums in them. And here's a, here's a little mountain hemlock, a little collected species that I got. And uh, there's ferns growing around that. But here are these stepping stones. You come around. And I put these stepping stones, they project out in the lawn. Again, it invites the viewer to stand here and to look at the lawn, to look at the garden, to look at the various focal points. I have focal points. I have masses of shrubs. In, I got a focal point here, and I got a, a, a mass of shrubs that just kind of, kind of lead you to the next focal point, which is right there where that lantern is. And I've got a mass of shrubs. Um, the carex and then there's another focal point and we've got a that bird feeder like I say we like to feed the birds and there's a, a nice um, kind of craftsman style bird feeder and then we've got another focal point where that other Japanese lantern is I use Japanese lanterns as focal points uh, to draw your attention and then I have this this bed area here let me focus out this bed area here projects out like a like a peninsula into the into the, the sea of grass, and it uh, it's got the um, sangokaku uh, coral bark maple in the center of it, and this moss garden. So it comes out. So again, it draws your eye there. And another thing that I have done is I have put smaller trees. I have put smaller trees as you go back further into the into the into the distance the trees get smaller well not the not the you at the corner of the building but i've got i got a hemlock here and then i've got the little pagoda and then i've got a little hinoki cypress and i've got a little um that little uh, little uh, dwarf hemlock back there so the trees get smaller so it looks like you're looking off into the distance and that's kind of a japanese thing to do too and i've tried to incorporate that into into the uh, the whole thing so here's one of my water features. It's an old uh, pump that I, actually I used to pump water out of that pump. Uh, years ago, um, I lived in a place where that exact, exact pump uh, was attached to a, a well or a cistern and uh, I actually, it worked. And so when they tore the, when they redeveloped the property, I took the pump and now I have a water feature out of it. And uh, that bucket there, as a matter of fact, I grew up on a farm and that bucket, I used to take, uh, in that bucket when I was a, a little child, I used to take water up to, to, to the chicken house in that bucket and give them water. And now I turn it, it's an aspect of the water feature and water drains down and these glass floats are actually uh, floats that, are, that were Japanese floats that floated over to the Oregon coast. Uh, you used to, you know, 40, 50, 60 years ago, you used to be able to find them laying on the beach. They're made out of, made out of old vodka bottles. And I've got a couple more down there. This is a, uh, this is a, a recent float, but these other ones that are floating are from vodka, uh, not vodka, but sake bottles. Uh, and they use them for uh, uh, fishing, for the fishing nets to keep them afloat. And then they would get loose and then they'd wash up on the shores of Oregon, Washington, Alaska, and, Ca and Canada and so forth. So here is my, um, Clematis is just starting to bloom, and that's kind of exciting. Beautiful, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? And then I've got, a, I've got more Carex, Carex grass, and I've got some, as we noted, over there. So we kind of have some elements here that repeat themselves. And here's another one of my bonsais that I'm working on. A little another mugle pine, I've got it wired up and hopefully that will turn into something nice. And here in another few weeks, I'll be candle pruning, uh, doing the first, rain, uh, first round of candle pruning on my pine trees. Uh, here's another addition to uh, my collection. This is a rock. I put some, planted some moss on it, and it's here by the front door of my office. This is my office, my den, my man cave. And, <clears throat> Uh, you notice there's a rooster theme. There's roosters and, and more roosters and more roosters up there. And I've got roosters inside. Here's a rooster over here too. Well, it's because this used to be a chicken house. And I, I totally, about 30 years ago, I converted it into my office. 
and um, and so I I got kind of a, a rooster theme going. This is um, evergreen huckleberry that's native to the Oregon coast, and it's blooming right now. It's really pretty. It's got little uh, lantern type bells on it, and actually maybe this year we'll have some berries. I don't know. And I've got more here, and uh, we go around the side of my office. I've got burning bushes here. This is a burning bush right here. And it often turns bright red in the in the fall time, which is kind of nice. We walk around the side of my hot tub here. And again, we have a little path that goes around to the side. My camellia is, is almost done blooming. I've got it pruned in the, that needs, now it's growing, so it needs to be pruned again. Here's a vine maple. And again, it's starting to grow and it will need pruning pretty soon. There's another fatsia. And here I've got another snag. This is a, um, a burnt snag that I, I cut off and um, from a forest fire and I brought it in here. You can see it, I've got a fern in there. So that kind of helps hide the, the fence, the neighbor's fence there. And then we have uh, another a Pyrus japonica that hasn't started to bloom yet. Let me zoom out. And then we have some bonsais in little pots. I've got a little display of bonsais here that I picked up and um, I've got a little drip system on them so when I'm gone, well, they can be watered. So, anyway, one of my recent acquisitions that I'm really proud of, well, let me, before we get to that, uh, I didn't like the look of my deck. I, so I put new boards on there. But also, I, I decorated with these ornamental grasses and these rocks, these river rocks. I, I, I put that to kind of take your eye away from the, the edge of the deck. This is my own innovation. I think it looks pretty cool. And if you step back and take a look at it, that's what it looks like. I've got planters on my deck and I have a wood stove, so I've got a wood box there. And I was going to say, one of my most, my recent acquisitions, and I'm so proud of this, is this beautiful bonsai. It's a, it's a, um, a juniper of some kind, or it's, maybe it's a cypress. I don't know what it is, but I, 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 I found it in a nursery when I bought it, and it just really gives the, the, the yard and this vantage point from the deck a very um, Japanese look. What can I say? And here's a, um, a tree that I've been working on for years. I brought it in here many years ago. I was a client of mine who had it in a little pot by the front door. I put it here and it has taken off and I've got it pruned. It's a, another kind of juniper. Similar, it's probably about the same kind as that one. They're very similar. So here by my back deck, by my back door, I've got, I've got this, this uh, pruned, opened up. <clears throat> now coming down off my back deck, I need to make a new one. This one isn't very good, but I, I cut a uh, a tree we were taking down, a, a cedar tree, I cut uh, some steps. I'm going to redo that. You know, like I said, the Japanese garden is always, um, always being worked on. Always being worked on. Here's my water feature that I, I made uh, from scratch. And um, it's, uh, I brought the rocks down from the mountains. I got these rocks out of a river. So they've got moss on them. And I planted different things in here. To you give it a real natural look. And uh, this is right by our bedroom window, so we can kind of hear the water falling and uh, help to block out the noise of the city that we can hear in the background. And um, so, uh, and then here's, here's another, you know, like I say, a Japanese garden is always needing to be tended. Um, I recently got this little Hinoki cypress, and I wired it up. He's not doing too well. This winter was really tough on him, so he's dying. So I'm going to put, I'm going to rip him out. Every once in a while, you lose a plant, it's just the way it goes. And uh, even with the best care, and I've got another mugle pond here, I'm going to put him in there. I've got an old watering can and it kind of goes as a, a decor. Here's one of my other lanterns. This is my first lantern I ever got. I planted moss on top of that. And we're coming around the back of my hot tub. This is actually to hang our towels on when we use the hot tub. And I've got more ferns. And here is, a, I think this is false Solomon's seal. It's a native, a plant that's native to 
to the mountains around here, and more Pyrus japonica, more fatsia, and more burning bushes to kind of tie in with the burning bushes that are uh, up against the, the back of my office. We walk around here, and again, you can see I've got bamboo and uh, accent, you know, it's a little re retaining wall with the rocks. And uh, here's my, here's another Nandina, which is just sprouting prolifically. And I will need to uh, prune that. And here's another look at my, my little prize bonsais. They're, they're nothing real special, but I like them. They mean a lot to me. And the little Johnny jump ups are blooming around the back of my hot tub. There's a little native uh, uh, um, violet that grows out in the, in the woods around here. And we walk around the side of the back of the house and I've got again, more rocks and I've used uh, wine bottles as a border for this, this pathway. And um, you know, here's some Gila bore, more Andina domesticas, um, and uh, another gate on the other side of the house that takes us out around the back of the house uh, to the back of the front yard so uh, there you go so I'm just going to kind of pan around and so that way you can get the kind of the overview of the, of the backyard and this is what I get to come home to and look at and I'm out here almost every day doing something in my yard it's a uh, it's, it's a work of love and um, I put my heart and soul into this. You can do the same thing in your yard. Just get creative and uh, pick, pick different things up, get ideas from other people, read books, and you can create your own Japanese garden. I have a very small yard. Uh, you don't need much room. Japanese gardens can be very small. Uh, you can use small plants if you learn how to. There's those ugly apartments. We used to have beautiful trees over there. They clear cut all the trees and gave us that. Anyway, it is what it is. Anyway, there you go. If you enjoyed this video, refer uh, it to someone and put a comment. Let me know what you think. All right, take care. God bless.